Hello Bug Bounty Hunters and welcome to this tutorial in which you are going to learn how to test privilege escalation and broken access control using three different or four different approaches which are all free and accessible to you. Now the motivation behind this tutorial is because sometimes you find it hard to find injection vulnerabilities in the application you're testing and so a lot of people don't give the time or don't have the knowledge to test how that you can escalate your privileges to perform unauthorized actions. And during my experience, pretty much every application I've tested lacked proper access control on certain features that they had. So without further ado, let's get started. The application we're going to test is Juice Shop. I've just used the public URL here. You can use your own instance, which you can de deploy very easily on Heroku. I've already covered this in a previous tutorial. You can also use the virtual lab that I have made available for everyone to download and play with, which contains both OWASP Juice Shop and OWASP WebGoat. But because we're not going to do any invasive testing, we're just going to use the public one to make it easy for you. So here I am on the main web page of the Wasp Juice Shop application. So the first thing we're going to do is create new users so that we can test broken access control between them. So let's go ahead and create some users. The reason why I'm creating three users is to show you use cases when you have multiple roles other than just two accounts and you want to test that as well. So now we have three users. The question now is how to use all of those users at once. We can use an incognito window, but that would allow us to play with just two users. We want to be able to test as much users as we want, so in this case what we can do is use extensions. Now I'm here on Chrome and I'm using an extension called Session Box. Feel free to comment down if you are using anything similar. If you're on Firefox, there is the container extension which is already covered in a video of Insider PhD. So let's go ahead and create a new temporary session. And right now you can see that there is a little red dot here which indicates that that this session is different than this one so we will create another session for our user c so click here temporary session the reason why i use a temporary session is just because this is a demonstration but in in reality what we you would do is create a new persistent session here and you can give it a name. For example, here is the user C. And here, let's call it Juice Shop. But let's just stick with the temporary sessions for now. Now let's first log in with the first user. Let's add uh, some products to the basket so that we verify that these are different users. So we have two elements on our basket. Now let's log in with user B. And you can verify that we have no baskets here and here we have two so these are two different users let's go to the third one and log in all right so now we have the ability to play with as many different users as we want while still using the same web browser which is very convenient let's try to see if we can access data from another user so to do that, we need to first understand how the application performs access control. I'm using the famous Foxy Proxy extension to switch on and off my traffic to go to Burp. So here we can like test adding a quantity to our basket of the product apple juice. So here we have two and we have a bunch of requests here. And the second request changes the basket item 42 and puts quantity equals to right so what happens if we just change the authorization better here and use the other users instead of this one 
So we, we now understand that the application is using the authorization header to authorize users. So now what we can do is change that authorization better token and see if we can change the victim's user. So let's suppose that our victim is user A and we want the user B to be able to change user's A basket. So the first intuitive way to do it is just send it to the repeater. Let me just deactivate the pretty mode here and change this authorization better to the other one, right? So to do that, we need to capture a request from the attacking user, which is here, user B. So let's just click on the user's account. All right, so this is the request, the profile. Uh, I don't think it's the right request to, to choose because I don't see any authorization here. So let's go back. Let's actually just add something to the basket. All right, so here we have the authorization there. Let's copy it here in the request of the victim. So if there is a broken access control, we should have a quantity 2 in the victim's user, but let's change this to 3 to just confirm if we have been able to change the quantity. Alright, sure enough, it seems that the basket has been changed. Let's verify this. Just going to deactivate the proxy and refresh. Just to not have a lot of requests coming into my burp instance. All right, so sure enough, we have increased the quantity of the apple juice product in the victim's user using the attacking user. So this is the idea behind, behind testing broken access control, that imagine that you have a lot of requests and you want to be efficient in your work. So rather than manually going through every request and changing this part of our uh, request, we need to somehow automate that process. The first automated way, let's say, to do that is to go to the proxy settings and play with the match and replace rules. So here we can add a new rule that says whenever I have a request header which matches, in this case it should match the victim's JWT token. We should replace it here with the with the attacking user. So let's grab our first token, which is the one of the victim's user, and just paste it here. Let's go back and let's get once more the token of the attacking user and change it here in the replaced replace field. All right, so now whenever we browse here and try to add something to our basket, it would automatically change the authorization better token and add our own, right? So let's do that with the user one. Let's first use burp and then let's try to increase the quantity of the Apple product. So here, when we hit plus, we see that there is a put request as we saw earlier, but this time you can see that there is an auto modified request, which basically just changed the JWT token. So let's verify here. So you can see that the token has been changed. Even though the token has been changed, we were able to update the basket as we saw earlier. So this is a little bit easier than the than the first manual approach. So all we have to do is proxy our requests through burp and then try to play with our victim user while changing the JWT to our attacking user. And you can see that each time I increase my basket items, the proxy automatically changes that and simulates the attacking user. So normally, if the application has been properly configured, we should not have a 200 OK, we would rather have a 403 forbidden response here or just something that tells us that an error has happened. All right, so let's now 
try to see if there is any better way because the problem here is that we can only test for two users, right? And everything is lost after we have tested our endpoints. Now imagine that you've already tested some endpoints which were properly protected, but after some time you still want to revise them so you would like some way to store your tested endpoints that way you just replay them and then see if the developers has made some regression bugs to do that i use auth matrix so this is the main workflow i perform whenever i want to test for cross access control issues using auth matrix I usually go through all the requests. Let's do that. But let's first verify that we have deactivated our rule in the match and the replace that we did earlier. So what, what I do is just play with the application as intended. Like for example, I could increase the quantity once more, right? I could decrease it. And if I go here, I see that there are there's my put request here right with the quantity of four so this is the request I want to test with auth matrix so what I do is simply just hit right, right click and then send the request to auth matrix and here you can see that I have a new request here so I want to test this request against the attacker user and see if I can update the quantity right so to do that all I have to do is just create a new user here that's user B, our attacking user, right? And let's go ahead and also try other, maybe accessing the profile, right? So let's send it to auth metrics. Let's see the reviews and maybe create a comment. In this case, this is our request, which adds message good with author A at A. Let's send it to auth metrics, okay? And so we have three requests, right? And we want to test if user B is able to either update the basket items of user A or access the profile of user A or make a review as user A. So now what we need to do is add the request header to auth matrix, right? So this is our victims user, but we want to test with the attacking user. So we do the same as we did before. Let's go to the second tab and send a request to capture the authorization better. So now just go to auth matrix and hit new header. And right away you see that there is a header appearing here. So what we do is just paste in our attacking user. To be 100% sure that this is the user that we want to use, we can also send the cookies. So in this case, I'm just, go I'm just going to record a request from the attacking user and just hit right click and then send the cookies to auth matrix. And magically, the cookies have been populated here, right? So this basket item ID42 is only accessible should normally be accessible to only user A. The profile, I guess that, um, let's see the response here. I think that this response would return the user, whichever user who has cookies. So in this case, I say that user B has access to this endpoint. And for the third request, I'm trying to send a message with this body the application should maybe test if the author here corresponds to the one which is configured here in this JWT token, but I think it's not the case. I'm just leave this unchecked to test if it's properly configured or not against broken access control. So now everything is, is set up. All I have to do is hit run and see that I have two red flags as you can see here, which means that this is these endpoints should be further, further investigated. So Authmatrix here uh, concluded that user B had the same response as the original response, which clearly indicates that this is a strong 
potential broken access control vulnerability. And the same thing for the third request. Let's go to the application and see if indeed we had a new review as user B. I think it was here. Yes, so we have two reviews. The second one being issued by user B and it's in the name of user A. Now the cool part here is that we can save this state and to do that you just hit save and give it a name and then you can load it afterwards whenever you need it and then all we have to do is just paste in here the new authorization JWT token and maybe send the new cookies all you have to do is just hit run and all your endpoints will be tested without you retesting or recapturing every request for the second round and the cool thing here is that we can test for multiple users so let's say that you first tested with user B but you also want to see if user if another user with less privileges can perform unauthorized actions so to do that all you have to do is just create a new user in this case we will call it user C and right away we see that there is a new entry here user C which we can populate with our HTTP header which is the JWT token and the cookies so what you do is just go to the history tab and then use your third tab in Chrome and access your application. Make sure to just proxy the request through Burp. Let's go ahead and send a comment. And we have here our JWT token, which we can use here, as well as the cookies. So here we have either user B or C. And since there, this is a request of user C, we're just going to send it to user C. So here it's populated. Oops, I forgot to hit enter. So now all we have to do is rerun your requests while mentioning which endpoints here should be accessible to user C. So because these are the same, have the same privileges, so I'm just going to check the get profile here and hit run. You can see here in the second request that the green color means that this is respecting your expectations while the red flags mean that this is a broken access control problem potentially. And so you can see here that user C has also been able to update users A's basket 42. And this is how you test with off metrics. Now imagine that the application after several months has added a new role. So all we have to do is just log in with that new role and add a new user here and then check the request that you suspect and you would test it in no time. Compare it with revisiting the application and redoing your same exercise that you've done in your previous run. It would cost you a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of effort, it just doesn't scale. All right, we still have two other extensions. Authorize, which is a really exhaustive one to test cross access, broken access control. And we have auto repeater as well. So until the next tutorial, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.